Hi everyone, welcome to the final episode of the Hunterdon County Farm to Fork series for this year. My name is Megan Muehlbauer and I am the Hunterdon County Agricultural Agent. Today I am at the Rutgers University Snyder Research and Extension Farm in Pittstown and I am standing in a one-year-old hazelnut variety trial. That's right everyone, soon, within the next few years, we hope to have locally New Jersey grown hazelnuts. Although hazelnuts are not widely grown in the United States, they have been cultivated for a long time. In fact, they were first cultivated by the Romans and are one of the oldest cultivated plants in Europe where they're grown quite extensively and they're also eaten in many products. Now this is not to say that there have not been attempts to grow hazelnuts on the east coast of the United States prior to now, but the attempts really failed due to a deadly disease called Eastern filbert blight. A fellow named Felix Gillette, he was actually a nurseryman, predicted that hazelnuts would grow better in the Mediterranean climate regions of Western Oregon than they did in the east co eastern coast of the United States, which coincidentally did not have the disease Eastern filbert blight present. The hazelnut industry then thrived until the early 1970s when Eastern filbert blight made its way over to the hazelnut growing region of Oregon. Consequently, the Oregon State Hazelnut Breeding Program began breeding for resistance to Eastern filbert blight. Then Rutgers University breeder Reed Funk, along with his graduate student Tom Molnar, teamed up to help breed for resistance. I will talk a little more later about these two breeders. So you may now be wondering, all right, now where do hazelnuts actually grow if they're not growing in the East Coast? Well, generally speaking, they're grown commercially in more Mediterranean climates with mild summers and mild winters. So 70% of hazelnuts are actually grown in Turkey where you will find this climate. Then 14% are grown in Italy and lastly, 4% of the world's hazelnuts are grown in Oregon. Now, 99% of which are grown in the Willamette Valley, which is a special Mediterranean re climate region within Oregon. But with the help of Oregon State University and Rutgers University breeding efforts, we do hope that the United States growing region will start to expand significantly. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the plants themselves, which you can see in these pictures see in these pictures and videos. Hazelnuts are in the genus Corylus, which is in the Betulaceae family. So this family is actually also the family of plants that has birch trees, which you can see with some of the bark, with the bark of some hazelnut species have similar bark to birch trees. The hazelnuts are also monoecious, meaning that they have male and female flowers both on the same plant. Now the male flowers, which you can see in the video here, are catkins. So they will expand about double in size from what you're seeing right here, uh, and they will mature in about March or April, and at that time they will begin shedding their pollen, actually. The female flowers, which are these little buds that you're seeing in these pictures, just simple buds, it's hard to tell the difference between them and vegetative buds, they're going to extrude a tiny tuft of red stigmas. No showy petals, no fancy beautiful scents. They really will look just much like this when they are uh, mature and receptive, which will be from January to about March. Consequently, they are a lot more cold hardy than the male flowers. Hazelnuts are also self incompatible. So that means that you need to have another tree, another hazelnut tree, and it needs to be a specific hazelnut tree to be able to have cross pollination and produce hazelnuts. Now, I say tree, uh, or I've been saying hazelnut tree, but hazelnuts are really inherently bushes. And you can see that from this picture of the small hazelnut demonstration plot that we have. You can see how bushy they are if you let them grow without pruning them to a single liter. Now, in commercial hazelnut production, especially in the United States, they'll be pruning these trees to a single liter, and that aids uh, in harvest of the hazelnuts, which I'll go into a little bit later. Now hazelnuts usually grow on their own roots, but sometimes they're grafted onto rootstocks and that also helps for a tr more tree-like habit and to lessen suckering. You can see here from this picture of me and the, or, and the video of me pointing to, this is the hazelnut graft union. So 
uh, this particular these particular trees in our plot have actually been grafted to aid in having a single hazelnut uh, leader for the tree. These hazelnuts are also, I wanted to note, that they're spaced at 20 foot centers. So these are, there's a lot of space between hazelnut trees. It looks nothing like a high density apple block or the high density apple block that we had talked about earlier in our Farm to Fork series. Now once hazelnut flowers are pollinated, which occurs in March and April, the actual fertilization does not occur until about June. At this time, the nuts start to develop within a leafy husk, which unfortunately I do not have great pictures of for you guys because all the husks have really disintegrated along with the leaves at the, the orchard floors here. But it's interesting because the husks and the nuts themselves will vary widely in shape and how tightly the nut holds into the cluster depending on what hazelnut species and even what hazelnut cultivar is growing. Now, a lot of the hazelnut breeding work um, that we've done in the United States, we have worked to ensure that the hazelnuts will drop from the clusters and fall to the ground. Now let's talk a little bit about how hazelnuts are processed. Now once the hazelnuts have, fall, have fallen from their husks to the ground, they're actually swept up into the middle of the rows. So you can see the hazelnuts that are growing down our rows. They're very small right now, but there's a big space between them that we talked about, the 20 foot spacing. So having spacing like that allows the grower to sweep the hazelnuts into the middle of these rows, and then they actually come through with a giant vacuum uh, that's attached to their tractors. After that, they have the hazelnuts run through a cleaning process. So basically they dehusk them and then they'll actually clean off the nuts themselves. And then they let them sit and dry. Now, if you don't have this drying, um, pro the, the step of drying of hazelnuts and you decide to crack them out, they really will taste like an uncooked potato. It's really quite unpleasant. You really need to dry down, dry uh, the moisture out of the hazelnut to be able to get that great hazelnut flavor. And specifically, you start to smell this one aromatic compound that is called filbertone. Now, hazelnuts are grown, are sold both in shell and they're sold cracked. They're used in all sorts of products, the hazelnuts that are sold cracked, which I'm sure many of you know of. Ferrero Rocher being one of the largest buyers of hazelnuts in the world, um, they're big ones in using hazel. They're big players in using the cracked hazelnuts uh, for their chocolate products. Another interesting thing to note is that hazelnuts actually have a really great fatty acid profile, meaning it's good good for you, a heart healthy profile. Lots of omega three fatty acids. In fact, they're nearly identical in their fatty acid profile to that profile of olive oil. So hazelnuts in and of themselves are really quite healthy and good for you. Now I would not be speaking to you today about hazelnuts if it was not for a Rutgers University turf grass breeder, Reed Funk. Reed Funk decided later in his career that he wanted to breed a sustainable, low input nut crop that would be adapted to grow in New Jersey. Now him, along with my advisor, and his graduate student at the time, Tom Molnar, tested thousands of different nut species, from ginkgos to walnuts to almonds, and they found, after doing testing at research farms throughout New Jersey, that hazelnuts were found to have the most potential to be grown in New Jersey. I hope you all enjoyed learning more about hazelnut horticulture today. So tune in later in the week to learn, about, learn more about these nutrient-packed nuts and how to cook with hazelnuts with our family, cons family consumer health science agent, Sandra Grunzi. Thank you and have a nice holiday.